And here, Damien Denis, what's, what's your main claims to fame in Nokia? Which, which models have you been had a real input in over the last uh, three or four years? Uh, I guess the ones that you're going to know me best for are going to be N73, um, N95, uh, N86, 8 megapixel, N82, uh, very popular with yourself, I know. And now I've been heavily involved in the, in the sort of optimization of the camera with the, with the new Nokia. And N8. you're going to wave that around while we talk, aren't you? This, the, uh, show the camera off in all, all its glory. Just looking at the N8, if you want to just hold that for the camera, why did you decide to go for, for example, an OLED screen rather than a transflect LCD like on the iPhone? What was the, what was the thinking behind OLED? Well, the sort of entertainment side is a big piece of the Nokia N8, um, in addition to the, to the camera yeah. side. Uh, and as well as when you're looking back uh, through the sort of visual content of the display, there's, there's no better way of doing that than with an OLED display. Um, the viewing angle is great, so if there's a couple of views and you're looking flicking through pictures, then that's a really great way of enjoying that with the wide viewing angle that OLED provides. Um, in daylight though, this new OLED display is really bright, so you can continue to, to use the camera in the bright light and conditions. So it's even better than directly behind you. You can still see the icons on the screen, you can still see autofocus confirmation, you can still see that level of detail composition, etc. and still enjoy taking really great pictures and videos. So it's better than traditional OLED screens as on the 86, for example? Definitely. Have you, done any, have you done any comparisons between the Yacht OLED and Super OLED from Samsung? Only my own personal experience of, of shooting some clips over the back garden in the back garden over the weekend, because I knew you were going to ask yeah. that question. Um, so I was actually purposely trying it with the sun, yeah. the midday sun directly on, the, on there, I was still able to, to use it quite easily. Okay. Why did you go for a three and a half inch screen rather than 3.7, which seems to be the sweet spot for OLED for many other manufacturers? Is That's that a cost confession? No, not at all. It's about a balance of the overall the sort of capabilities of the device, but also the design as well. So having the, sort of the, the curved size of the, of the device and the sort of width of it, and really sort of feel very comfortable in the hand, and particularly with one-handed uses. Uh, when you flick around to enjoy your visual content, um, or control the music, etc., then, uh, then it sort of fits very, very nicely in the hand in the pocket, of course. 3.7-inch display at this stage may have taken some of that, some of that away and sort of taken the balance um, down a little bit. But I think, in this case, a really nice look compact powerhouse. The, the glass, this is the temp obviously tempered glass in the front, is it Gorilla Glass? Is it the really tough stuff we've seen down there across the Yes, desk? absolutely. Yeah. So it's, it's highly scratch resistant, um, so it's, it's as durable as you can get it at this stage. Okay. Uh, why is the N8 taking so long to get to market? It seems to have been announced years ago and we're still looking at a couple of months away. What's, what's taking the time? Well, we're going to make sure that the product is, is right for the marketplace, so we're still optimising various aspects. So my area of speciality is obviously the camera, and everybody has a lot of passion in getting those things absolutely right, so uh, we'll bring it to the marketplace when we're finished, optimising and finessing the performance of the product. So you're still tweaking the algorithms and sensors? Certainly in terms of my area, yes, we're, we're, we're tweaking and tuning and, uh, and there's a lot of people working really, really hard on that side of things. To make sure that I don't get to complain at the end of the day. I hope you'll be delighted. <laughs> um, in terms of the sensor inside the camera, we've said it's the biggest sensor ever put into a smartphone. How does the um, the pixel density in the sensor compare to, for example, that in the iPhone 4? That's all, 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 or the, the, um, the sensitivity, Steve Jobs was going on about how, how great the sensor was in the iPhone 4. Have you got any metric in terms of comparison? So, in terms of the pixel, so first of all, the sensor size is 1 over 1.83 inches, which is the biggest sensor that's ever been introduced into a mobile device, uh, bigger than most digital cameras. Uh, in terms of pixel size, at 1.75 microns, which is the same as, as Apple operating for, for the iPhone 4. Um, however, with the, uh, the total uh, processing that we're able to, to benefit from that very high resolution 12 megapixel sensor, when you view those images, on, on your uh, on the screen in normal uh, viewing magnification, um, you would actually uh, the, the, you get a benefit in terms of um, uh, display. The display you, you won't see the visual noise in the image when you're when you're viewing in that way. So the net result is that you'll be able to take really stunning pictures in, in low lighting conditions. So you've got a similar sensor pixel size to the iPhone 4, but you're doing it full 12 megapixel resolution rather than five. Exactly. That's okay. right. Yeah. So much bigger sensor. And we get various benefits from that. So we're still collecting a lot of light. This has a digital microphone, and how exactly does that work? What's the difference? So we have two microphones, two digital microphones. We have one on the front 
um, just down here by the camera, and we have one on the rear. So what we're able to do is we're one is, is optimised for recording what's in front of you, and the other one is for optimised for, for getting the ambient uh, audio side of things. Um, as you've just witnessed yourself, it's, it's pretty pretty incredible ambient sound. We're able to, to deal with the sort of uh, subtleties of bird song, for example, but still be able to pick up really clear speech. The additional, in addition to just those, those two digital microphones, we're also encoding 128k kilobits uh, per second. And that's AAC, yeah. and of course that's stereo as well. And we're sampling at 48 kilohertz as well. So, so it's really you know, top dollar audio performance. And presumably, the fact that it's a digital microphone means it can cope with the slightest of sounds and the noisiest of rock bands without distorting and going horrible like most mobile phone uh, exactly. microphones do. So. When, when you have very high continuous uh, audio source, it will adapt itself to that, and you'll still be able to, to hear the music you know, similarly to how your ears experienced it in, in the original uh, environment. Okay, and finally, which of your camera flagships are you most proud of? You're not, you can say that if you want, but which are you honestly most proud of? Um, I think this, this is the one that I'm, that, I, that I'm really, really excited about. N82 and N86, I, I was... I was was uh, really impressed with, with what we were able to achieve and really proud of the achievement there. But this one takes it to a whole new level where we can say for the first time that we're producing incredibly natural images. There's no artificial uh, processing going on there to, to fool the eyes into sort of thinking that the image is better than it actually is. We're just relying on the, the great Carl Zeiss optics to provide really naturally sharp, vibrant images as you remember the, the original environment that you were in.